So your characters, Alexa and Jason, simultaneously deal with breakups and trying to get promoted at work. So Brenda, I'll start with you. How does communicating with this supposed stranger over text help Alexa cope with everything going on in her life? Um, well, the thing is, is something that starts off as like an accidental mess, like freaking out that you texted someone, something very vulnerable that you don't know, um, turned into her being able to turned into like it being easier for her to vent to someone she didn't know. Um, and I found that really interesting being able to like let your guard down and sometimes it being easier when you're being to let your guard down in front of someone that you has no idea who you are, has no idea where your background is. Um, there's something liberating about that. And I thought it was really, really fun. Um, and also that juxtaposition to, you know, doing that while like arguing with Aaron, like in the work life and then like turning around and like texting these, like, I just had the worst day ever because of this person and not realizing that they're talking about each other. I thought that was really, really fun and kind of go does like a callback to like, for me, at least, like when I started dating someone new and getting those text messages in your heart, like, you know, just jumping when you get those text messages from them um, and then playing that off with that you're arguing with that same person that you're getting those text messages from, I thought was really fun. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah, they really go the whole movie without getting getting to know each other without realizing it. Exactly. And I was surprised by how confident Jason is telling Alexa he loves her only shortly after finding out she was her. So Aaron, what does that say about his character and what this texting relationship did for him? I think he was just as ready to move on from his last relationship. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, think, I think, you know, his, his, his girlfriend left him kind of high and dry and he d didn't see it coming. And he's got his work friends that he can you know, open up a little bit too, but it's still his buddy. You know, he doesn't want to, he's not comfortable, I think, to, to really completely open up. So when he started getting these text messages, it was really a way for him to kind of, you know, open up his heart and, and, and try to get some of that healing so that he can, he can move on and, you know, prevent him from focusing so much on the past and, and really focusing on what the future can hold and what he wants. Um, so I feel like, you know, the, you know, Jason, he's got, he's so competitive with work, Like we had all this banter, all this crazy stuff happening at work. And like Brenda said, we're turning around, you know, looking for that outlet. And it just happens to be, you know, her on the other end of it, <laughs> and not even knowing it. So kind of watching all that unfold, I thought was, you know, even though I knew what was going to happen, it was so much fun just to see the banter, but also the development of this relationship of, of a stranger at the time but it kind of came at the came at the perfect time for for both of the characters yeah yeah definitely so brenda do you think alexa makes the right decision to leave perry and be with jason at the end and how does she kind of weigh that decision i mean i mean obviously of course because number one i think her relationship with perry was more about a relationship that she thought she wanted and needed she wasn't she was so caught up in these like goals and like these markers that she had in her life that she needed to accomplish to be happy to be successful um and i don't think she was actually like being her, her true self in this relationship because she thought this is just what she needed to do and perry's a great guy but he's not the right guy for her and it took him to say that for her to realize it um and i think that's the interesting thing about the relationship with jason is the fact that they got to know each other on a level where it wasn't romantic where there were no expectations of you know they always say like when you start dating someone they put their best like self forward they actually, Jason and Alexa put their like most vulnerable self forward first. And so they really got to open to be, open up to each other on like another level that I don't think Alexa's ever really done before period, even to like her friends. Um, and, and I think that's what really made the difference is they got to know each other on this like, you know, very intimate level quite quickly. And on the flip side, they've actually known each other for a long time. So they know each other on a different level as well. So I think that's when they found out that they were who they, who they were it was sort of an easy choice it's like sometimes the person you actually like dislike the most that chemistry actually is there's so much more there than what you think um and so i think it was just like the perfect kind of concoction of like craziness that happened and yes i definitely think she made the right choice simply because jason saw her for who she was the good and the bad and still accepted and like wanted to be with her anyway and i think that's the most important thing it's yeah. not just being in a relationship for the things that like, or with the person you think you need to be with. 
Right, definitely. And as we're talking about the ending of the film, Aaron, what ultimately motivates Jason to allow Alexa to take the promotion? I think he just, I think he, Jason felt like that was the right thing to do. You know, I, I know that, you know, he's, he's super competitive and he really loves, you know, this woman and just, there's nothing. I think when you love someone, you, your priority is just to make them the happiest that they can be and to be their rock and to, to help them in any way you possibly can. So I remember giving, you know, up there giving that speech, looking at her character and really like feeling like, there's nothing that Jason would would rather do than to see her succeed and to see her, you know, get this account, which she, she's worked so hard for. And he's seen it. He's seen the ups and downs through the text messages and at the work and at the workplace. And um, ultimately, seeing her happy is what would make him the happiest. So I and feel like that's really the, the reason why, um, you know, Jason did that. And then on the flip side, I think that's what really like changed Alexa's mind was the fact that the the Jason that she's always known has been like very selfish and like all about him. He would do anything to get to the top and to see those the 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 this person that she's been texting and Jason sort of like she sees both sides of them, especially in this speech, seeing that he's willing to give up not only the the promotion, but the the financial aspects that come with that because of his own personal struggles to give that up just to see her happy, I think really hit so hard that for the first time someone is putting her and like her wants and everything before themselves and how like unselfish that is and what that really means and how and just shows how much that person cares about her I think really that's why that shift at the end you know it may feel quick but it wasn't it's when you see these two characters you when you finally put them together and see you're like oh my goodness, it's so much more than like, this person is so much more than I thought. And, and and it actually cares about me. I think that's like the real turn for her was like after that speech, just realizing that he's not what, she totally judged him and he's not what she thought. Um, and I think that's what made the decision really easy. I'm also curious for both of you, what was it like filming the scenes where your characters speak their text messages out loud? Like, how did you create a sense of chemistry even when you're apart? Well, well, I, I, I will say, you know, we had, you know, Brenda was kind enough to stay, you know, for my, you know. my takes and she was able to read her, you know, her dialogue so that we could really continue with that relationship and that really that character building that we both had done and all the other, you know, the other scenes. And so I feel like um, that helps tremendously as an actor, as opposed to, you know, somebody just reading it as great as they may do. There's just nothing like having the actual character there to, to read it the way that the character would. So, um, but it, it took a little, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, you don't typically, <laughs> at least I don't, you know, you know, basically say every single text message, but um, that was a tremendous help having her on the other side of the camera, read those to me. Yeah, it's always it's also tricky reading text messages. I feel like people don't yeah. speak the way they text. So yeah. that was something that I was actually talking to Peter, our director, with. I'm like, a lot of stuff, it's like, it's tricky because, you know, you, we want to make it feel believable, but also feel like a conversation. But also we know that that's kind of like the fun twist to the movie. But how do we keep that going? Because I think originally we weren't speaking out loud. I think it was actually just text messages, like the way that right. it was originally written. Um, and to try to find that balance was, was really, was, it was interesting, but also it was actually really fun because you, we sort of got to play, but at the same time, we couldn't because we also knew that whatever we did on our end, whoever shot theirs first, because we're also shooting this during COVID. So everything was very isolated for actors, um, that we had to like, know that the other person had to you know, if, they, if we weren't able to read for each other, that we would have to be like, OK, like, I don't want to take creative liberties for their character or for, you know, for them. So it, it was tricky at times, but for the most part, we were very fortunate and like we're working together and we're able to like actually read as if we were reading a scene. So we were really lucky. That's great. I love that. And as with many romantic comedies, Love Accidentally is a heartwarming story that may or may not be overly realistic. <laughs> so I'm curious for both of you, if you found yourself in a similar situation as your characters, would you be able to open up to a stranger like that? I mean, I, I, like, I would like to 
think that I would like hope so, but I, me myself, I probably am so, I, I listen to too many true crime podcasts to like just text someone randomly. I'm like, oh my God, this person is trying to kill me. They're probably stalking me. Um, I think, unfortunately, I think I'm too paranoid to be as open as Alexa is. I wish I lived in a world where I wasn't worried about being murdered 24 yeah, seven. I know, too much dateline for me or else I probably would, but all, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for your time today. Congratulations on this film. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Madeline. Thank nice to meet you.